somebody who is who has more power and has power over you is telling you so you cannot do something. So of course that is that is hard. But I just thought, well, fuck it. I'll just I'll just do something uh, what other people uh, consider I cannot do. Tackle the, the problems that you measure, and you can you can measure it, you can quantify it, and then you can tackle it. And I have to tell myself to slow down more than I have to tell myself to, than I have to like uh, kick myself uh, on the in the ass to get myself uh, off the off the couch. Focus, focus on if you want to achieve something that is truly uh, truly magnificent, you have to focus entirely on that one thing. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the Optimal Performance Podcast. The OPP is brought to you by Natural Stacks, makers of 100% natural and open source supplements designed to help you live optimal. For more information on how to build optimal mental and physical performance into your life, visit naturalstacks.com. And of course, keep it right here listening to the OPP. Brian Muncy is probably the smartest guy I know. Trust me, Muncy is the nutrition guy. Ryan Muncy's out there trying to make the world better for all of us. The Optimal Performance Podcast is bold, edgy, creative, entertaining, and epic. Ryan Muncy is my go-to guy. Ryan Muncy is he's the first guy I call. He's making people's lives better. Ryan Muncy's an innovator. Welcome back to another episode of the Optimal Performance Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Muncy. I'm joined today by a very special guest, Mr. Hover Fiergaver. Did we get that? Am I, I'm a little bit close. You're close. Yeah, gr- good enough. All right. Uh, so before we get to uh, today's show, and uh, I've got a really cool story about how Hover and I met and how this all came to be, a couple of housekeeping notes. As always, guys, go to naturalstacks.com. You'll be able to see the blog post, video version of this one, links, resources. Uh, Go to iTunes. Leave us a five-star review. Let us know how much you like the show. And when we read your review on the air, we will hook you up with free Natural Stacks products. Uh, I got one today from you from Brian AG. says, mind blown. This is a five-star review. I love listening to Ryan and his esteemed guests. So uh, no pressure over there. I always look forward to taking in the gold mine of knowledge and that bit of enlightenment after each session. Keep at it, sir. Brian AG, shoot me an email, ryan at naturalstacks.com, and we'll get you that care package. And finally, guys, share the OPP. Um, whether it's this episode or the podcast in general, you're going to hear things that you wish your friends, your family knew, uh, anybody in your life who you know will benefit from and enjoy the things that we're talking about. Send them the the individual episode, send them the link to the show, tell them to subscribe, pay attention, listen, uh, whatever you want to do, share it on Instagram, Twitter, whatever works for you. We're greatly appreciative of you being here and sharing this. Uh, That's how we reach new people and help more and more people with the information that we're putting out there. Let's get to today's episode. Mr. Hover, let me tell you guys how this came to be. So uh, a couple of things here. Our guest. Cover is an Olympic rower. He finished fifth. He and his team finished fifth in Rio in 2016, uh, the Dutch rowing team. And we'll talk a little bit about his event and his training and all that stuff. But we met at the biohacking summit in Helsinki, Finland, in the fall of 2016, shortly after his uh, trip to Rio. So I spoke and had a couple of people come up and ask me questions afterwards. And I noticed that one of the guys asking me questions had the Olympic rings on his backpack. And uh, so we got to talk and I asked him if he was an Olympic athlete. And sure enough, he was. And uh, we had really fun conversation. And in the time that has passed, we've been working with our distributor, uh, Live Healthy, who is a co-sponsor for this episode as well. Uh, they are the distributor for Natural Stacks products in the Netherlands. If you're in the Netherlands, go to livehealthy.com. Uh, it's a web shop curated by Dutch biohacker Edward DeWild, and they offer all kinds of content products for people who want to upgrade their mental and physical performance, just like we're doing here. And they specialize in the bulletproof lifestyle. They ship all over the, uh, the EU. So if you're in Europe, check that out, livehealthy.com. Hover. 
when you and I met, we talked a little bit about neurofeedback and you were going to incorporate that into your training. We'll get to that question, but take us back and, and even me, because this is a conversation you and I haven't had. Take me back to the very beginning when you started rowing, you started having some success and then all of a sudden the coaches told you you were too small. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I don't like to think of me myself as too small, but that's, uh, that's rowing. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, 183 or six foot tall. And that is normal average height in the United States and in Europe. So that's completely normal, <laughs> but in rowing, that's considered small. And then, uh, so, so if that's small for rowing, what's the, like the average size for a rower? Yeah, uh, um, around two meters, six, six, seven. I think that's that's six, seven, right? Okay, so that's we're talking like NBA basketball height. Yeah, I th aren't aren't basketballers taller? Well, uh, I, depending on position, but I mean, Michael Jordan yeah. was six six. So. Yeah, so yeah, then it's, I mean, height is a very very big competitive advantage because if you're longer, if your body is longer, you can make a longer stroke, and you can probably also. Uh, yeah, may, put more watts on the water, so you have more power. Probably um, height is a competitive advantage, but there's more. There's more to it, as I will, I will probably uh, tell you later. Yeah. So, how did you sort of take? What, what were your thoughts when when you first heard these coaches saying, "No, you're too small." I mean, obviously, you didn't let that stop you. But what was walk us through that that mental um, environment? Yeah, so um, that's a, that was a, a a difficult time because you're 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 young and you're you're full of dreams and full of uh, hopes, and then somebody who is who has more power and has power over you is telling you so you cannot do something. So of course that is that is hard. But when you're young, you're also you have like a like a fuck you attitude, and. <laughs> and um, Sorry, excuse my language, but uh, that's that's what you what you have when you're young. So, um, I just thought, well, fuck it. I'll just I'll just do something uh, what other people uh, consider I cannot do. So, I started to looking into other things to make me uh, have a competitive advantage advantage over the bigger guys. And what I thought then back at the time was that if I cannot grow taller then i can certainly grow bigger in size so back on as much muscle as i can and i thought that was the that was the way to success because muscle is the thing that drives the boat i thought and it makes sense but um yeah so that's what i thought more muscle is more better <laughs> were you right I I wasn't I was right at, to a certain point to a certain point I was right but um, no I I I came to a conclusion right after um, I I had um, I had this, uh, this 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 coincidence that when I was getting bigger and bigger and more muscular <laughs> um, I made some YouTube videos so how to get how to get big, you know, these, these, <laughs> these stupid videos on, uh, on YouTube that you still see today. Um, but they were, they were funny, you know, I, I was making jokes and, uh, and, and people were, were, were dead serious about building muscle. And I was like, just, uh, just have fun with it and uh, make some, make some uh, crazy stuff in the kitchen. So I was, getting, uh, I was getting sort of famous in the community in the Netherlands because I was a small guy. And I was getting super huge and also getting some, uh, some rowing success from it. So uh, people started looking into me and um, even, even the head coach of the, of the men's team, even he saw it and he was getting a lot of uh, criticism from the rowing community that his training program was too hard. And he said, uh, he invited me uh, one day over and he said to me, all right, um, he, was, he was from Australia, um, and he was talking to me, and he said, all right, um, go. Uh, he couldn't pronounce my name, so he's like, Hoffert, Hoffert, I don't, I don't even know how to call you, but uh, I'm getting a lot of shit over me, saying my program is too hard, um, and I see you're the nutrition guy in the Netherlands, and uh, I want to 
get a guy like you to show the people that it is possible. And I thought, all right. Um, <laughs> he's basically saying that I'm, li I'm small and little and <laughs> um, that if people see me, then they see a small guy who's, who's just, um, yeah. So did, did he bring you in because of the YouTube videos or because of the success you were having with your rowing outside of the Olympic team? Yeah, he, he brought me in because of the or because of the YouTube videos. He saw me on the, and and word was spreading, of course. So so initially, it was more of like a consulting, helping coach and and optimize the actual rowers, uh, and, and then you proved your worth as a rower. Yeah, so he allowed me to train into in the team, and then I thought, all right, now I'm gonna sh give it everything I've got, and just sh show him that yeah, that I'm capable of doing all the things that the big guys can also do. So that's when I went, uh, went crazy with the training. And, uh, but that's, that was also the time I was still a student back then, you know, and I was also uh, uh, doing an, uh, uh, setting up a, a startup. So in, uh, in nutrition and uh, it was crazy. I raised a lot of capital for it, uh, for it with, uh, with my, um, with my associate. And, um, and that just put a lot of stress, a lot of stress on uh, on me, and uh, and also the training with that. I mean, we were training three times a day, and it was insane. It, like, like you said, the, the, and it, the, the people were right in the Netherlands. The, the training was insane. I mean, it was too hard. So after a while, I, I did get better. I, I started getting some success, and I, I was the uh, at one point I was the stroke of the of the of the Dutch men's eight. So, uh, and we were beating, we were beating the, the, the British who are all considered to be the best rowing nation in the world. So, uh, that was, I, I thought it was pretty much on top of the world, you know, with, with my philosophy on get large and in charge, you know? Yeah. Yeah. At what point did you realize that wasn't, uh, you know, the, that, that, that there was a point of diminishing returns for that? Um, yeah, so what happened was I got these uh, uh, weird health uh, issues, like weird health issues. Um, I got a um, skin, skin rash that wouldn't go away. Um, I mean, I got, I got tired. I was tired, but um, I mean, everybody thinks they are, that's, that's normal. You know, you're an athlete, you're training three times a day, so it's normal to be tired. Uh, but I was... I was having to take naps for like two and a half hours during the day and still wake up feeling pre like crap. So, uh, and I couldn't, couldn't sleep very, very deep during the night. And, um, I was getting, feeling depressed and I'm, I'm like a, a, a very normal guy. I had a very good childhood. I shouldn't be depressed at all. You know, I'm, I'm getting success, everything. Um, so there was, there was just, and I, at one point I, had the anxiety attacks before I would have to train. So I would have to get in the boat, but I, all I could do was just run back and forth or walk back and forth like a, like a polar bear, you know, and uh, before I had to get into the boat. So, I, and, uh, and that was when I started to think something was, was, get, was wrong, you know. So it, was, uh, it turned out I, I went to the doctors and they tested me on, all kinds of uh, markers, and it turned out that uh, I was overtrained. And yeah, that's uh, that's one and a half years before the Olympics. That's uh, the the point that you should be at your uh, getting at your at your best, you know, and not at your worst. Mm -hmm. So I was seeing all the like ten years of hard work slipping through my fingers. That's that's just it was that even terrified me more <laughs> but it turned out it was overtrained right so how did you turn that around and i mean now obviously we know you guys were able to finish fifth in rio you, you were there what was sort of the the process from uh, you know for, for the last year and a half from that point leading up to the games yeah that's that's interesting because the <laughs> you 
in, in rowing, it's, it's also it's a competitive sport, you know, there's everybody is looking uh, out for your place. So if I would uh, say to my coaches or to my teammates that I was overtrained, I would I, I knew for sure that they would replace me with somebody else, somebody taller, probably. Right. right. You, and you mean competitive for your spot in the boat within your yeah. own team, right? That's right. That's right. right. So, so uh, just let's, let's take a step back. And how many how many guys are in the boat? What distances are you guys uh, covering? Yeah. So the Olympic distance is two kilometers, and I'm in the four with four guys, and that's uh, that. The two k uh, takes around uh, six minutes, or between uh, five uh, five forty and six minutes, depending on the weather. So that's uh, that's that's an, an aerobic and anaerobic uh, sport. So that's also the hard thing about rowing that you have to train both systems. Mm-hmm. So you're both an endurance athlete and you're uh, an explosive and power athlete, and that makes it so hard, you know. Yeah. How do you, from, from a training perspective, how do you develop both of those optimally? Um, yeah, well, rowing do you, is, uh, <laughs> do you, do you periodize your training so that you're focusing on one and kind of keeping the other level and then incrementally edging them up? We do, but not as much as I would like to do it because, okay. uh, it's, it's kind of an, um, an archaic sports. It's, you know, if you see rowing, uh, in England, Everybody's walking around with the silly hats and old blazers uh, and, uh, and like Oxford Cambridge style uh, Hanley on Thames uh, stuff. So um, it, it has very a lot of tradition, and that's the that's the, that's also the, the bad that's all, that's 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 beautiful, you know. It's, that makes it it has the shine, but uh, right. it it also makes that um, that there are old ideas about training that that keep that they're stuck in there. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the time they would just do both at the same time, like in the morning and endurance training and then weights in the afternoon and they would both suck, you know, <laughs> or, uh, or you would get athletes that could do, that can do both like medium well. And yeah, so you're, 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 you're getting more average athletes instead of like the perfect, mm-hmm. perfect athlete. So what have you guys been able to do to develop the optimal athlete as opposed to the average athlete? Yeah, so what we do now is we periodize more. So mm-hmm. we have periods of, uh, of only strength training and very, very little rowing. So we do this, then the, we do strength training like in the morning and then in the afternoon we do a very short row, only technical stuff. Because rowing is also, people forget that it's a very technical sport. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's like... Olympic weightlifting. People think that's only strength, but it's actually it's more of a technique sport than it's uh, right. It's, right. So uh, people forget that a lot. <laughs> but uh, and then there are other periods where we uh, just go all out on the endurance and we do long sessions on the bike, on the road, and long sessions on the water, um, and also altitude training. Uh, so that's yep. that's. I follow you on social media, and I think you uh, you have a post recently where you guys were. Did, did you go to Iceland to do some altitude training? It was or? Austria. 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 Okay. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful mountains in uh, in Austria, and we live high and we train low uh, mm-hmm. on the water because there's a there's a there's a there's only water in uh, like, like at sea level. But then we also this year we started also training high, and that really impressed me how much of a difference that makes for uh, for an for an elite athlete it's yeah. uh, insane explain why that is so impactful and, and what has what have you experienced yeah so the idea of altitude training is that you um that, that the lack of oxygen at high altitude makes your body adapt and make more uh, red blood cells and um, improve your cardiovascular system but uh, most be, there, there are a few, uh, a lot of theories about uh, like train. If you have to train high, or uh, you have to train low, or live high and uh, train low, so uh, it's uh, it's it, we we started experimenting with that, and now we also incorporated the tra- the training at altitudes on a rowing machine, and that just it's it's so hard for your cardiovascular system. You just keep uh, 
panting and uh, and when, when you're doing very little work. So it's frustrating. But I've never seen uh, athletes make elite athletes. You know, I know you know you're rowing for for years and years. So you the only improvements that you see are like marginal, and that's mm-hmm. and that's already a lot. Mm-hmm. But I've never seen athletes make such huge jumps in performance in so little time at, at this level with, in, by incorporating altitude training. Yeah, that's a really important point. I mean, most of the time when you're looking at specialized athletes or elite athletes, you're talking about people who have spent a lot of time getting past sort of those beginner gains or the neurological gains. So to make significant progress that quickly is, is very, um, it's very eye opening, and, and yeah, it's, it, it is. speaks to the power of, of whatever that modality is that's helping elicit that uh, that stimulus or, or change. Um, so we kind of got off on a little bit of a tangent. Take us back to the year and a half before the 2016 games. How did you turn things around? With yeah, your- so where um, where I was uh, walking like a polar bear before I had to get into the boat. <laughs> um, at that point, uh, at that point, I was I was I was ge- getting to think that there was something wrong with me, and uh, the doctors were telling me, "Yeah, you're you're overtrained, and there's nothing you can do about it. You have to just take rest and come back later." But that's that's not an option when you're when you're like one and a half years before the Olympic Games. So what I thought was, well, all right. Um, through you, I'm. They, they say I'm. I am overtrained, but the way I see it is I. I have overtraining, and then what you, what the doctor sees, they see something um, that's identified with with the patient, you know. And I thought it's, it, it was more like a splinter overtraining. I can just uh, go to the cause and just pull the splinter out. I mean, if somebody is a splinter, you also you you don't say. I am a splinter, you know, it's, you can just, uh, you can just take out the, the, the part that's bothering you, the overtraining part. So I started, uh, that's around then. I think it was, it was a coincidence. I came in contact with, uh, with, uh, with the biohacking community. And I think it was just a coincidence. I think it was, uh, uh, Ben, ben Greenfield's show. And that uh, that that started off something that I've never seen before. I was I was looking into the recovery and nutrition strategies for a long time, and then I found out, wow, all right, there's this whole community of guys just like me who constantly want to improve their bodies and constantly seeking to uh, to get the next thing. <laughs> so it was like a, a revelation for me at that point. Wow. There's, there's this whole thing that I've never heard of before. And I can, I can dive deep into this thing. And I know I knew from that moment that this was, this was the thing that, that, that would fix me because you, you, you use everything from, from all the markers that you got and you just tackle the, the problems that you measure and you can, you can measure it, you can quantify it and then you can tackle it. So, that was the that was the moment that I thought, all right, this is it, biohacking. I I didn't know I didn't even know that there was a name for that, but uh, from that moment I was a biohacker. What were some of the first measurements or problems that you began to attack? Well, I had these um, terrible uh, digestive issues, uh, and just basically. Uh, uh, this this overtraining thing was already going going on for a long time because overtraining is 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 not something that goes from one day to the other you know it takes a long time to develop and it's also uh, it has a lot of uh, facets there uh, it's most multifaceted I don't, I don't know if that's the word yeah. but um, it doesn't have one uh, it doesn't have one uh, cause so it also doesn't have one solution but I had digestive issues. I had um, mental, mental and, and brain issues. I was, I was like feeling, feeling dumb, <laughs> and uh, people around me were either getting smarter and I, or I was getting dumber. <laughs> and uh, I've never experienced that, so I thought, uh, all right, the brain is something I must fix, and uh, my digestive issues, and um, I think that's that's a, that's the basic 
that's the basic things that you have to fix. I mean, if there's something wrong with your body, you have to start with the thing and fix the thing that is governing your body, and that's the brain. So that's where I started, by fixing, fixing the brain and um, implementing uh, uh, yeah, things like, uh, like fasting or, and a ketogenic diet and uh, just lowering inflammation in the body because of all the inflammation you, you're causing by training and by eating the wrong foods, that was also a great, great deal for me. I mean, we are sponsored by, uh, by the, uh, I don't know if I'm not allowed to say this, but <laughs> tread, tread lightly. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're sponsored by the Dutch milk industry. And they are they are supplying us with like whey protein shakes and a lot of things. But as it turned out, I am lactose intolerant, so they were basically <laughs> making me sick. <laughs> right. And um, yeah, that's that's that was a that was a big one for me. So yeah, so I mean, we've had uh, the Pinner Test folks on. If if you guys haven't heard that episode, go back and listen. Um, uh, Farid, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name because I'll butcher it, but uh, <laughs> Farid was an amazing guest. And, and we talked a lot about how uh, offending foods can create inflammation in our gut, which has a negative impact on serotonin production, all of our other neurotransmitters, uh, but especially the, the bacteria in our gut. And, you know, there's, like you said, there's, uh, there's a multi-pronged um, approach to trying to solve all of this. I notice you're wearing an aura ring. Yeah. Did you begin wearing that before the Rio Olympics? And are you using it to sort of look at HRV as a way to, in real time, uh, you know, sort of monitor overtraining? Because you, know, you mentioned you had yeah. gut issues, you had mental issues. The connection there is the vagus nerve. Vagal tone is synonymous with HRV. Um, you know, so they're basically the one, one in the same vagal tone and HRV. Mm -hmm. uh, and for you guys listening, we, I'm actually the guy who discovered HRV is Stephen Porges. Uh, I will be meeting with him next month to record a podcast. And, uh, he's also the, uh, positor of polyvagal theory. So that'll be a cool episode, but Hover, is there, how are you using the aura ring now? Yeah, so I use it as, um, as a thing to check if what I'm doing is right. Yeah. And um, my sleep is, is so important for this um, because if I'm doing things wrong, my sleep is suffering. That's, that's the first thing that happens. So um, I didn't have this before the Olympics. I wish I would have okay. because now I'm, I'm just so much more on, on top of things. Back then, we were using something else uh, called First Beat. It's also uh, Finnish. Uh, they're basically all the stuff that <laughs> it comes from Finland. Mm -hmm. And um, but uh, that was also that was also good. But it was it was not foolproof. You had to sleep with a with a heart rate monitor strap on your mm -hmm. uh, on your body, so that wasn't ideal. And this the ring, I mean, I mean uh, this is this is uh, just so low impact. You don't feel it when you wear it. It's, it's ideal for, for tracking. And can you keep that on while you're rowing? No, no, no. Okay. It, it, it hurts my fingers, so okay. I don't. That's um, always been my, if, if I have a complaint about the Aura Ring, it's not being able to wear it while I'm lifting weights or as exactly. you, you, can't, you can't wear it while you're training. And, and, you know, I've had conversations. I talked to them in Finland as well at the Biohacker Summit, and they said, you know, it's not an activity tracker. No. Um, you know, but I would still, and I'm sure you would too, love to be able to quantify certain metrics while you're rowing or while yeah. we're in the gym. So. Yeah, well, that's that could be the next next level stuff, uh, and they're, uh, they they can definitely improve on that. But the way I use it now, it's already it's already very very helpful, like a, a more a more advanced sleep tracker, the most advanced mm -hmm. I know of at this point. So you just mentioned. Uh, ketogenic diet are you are you full keto no not full okay not full, no I've, i'm curious to know how you incorporate that in with the demands of your sport being both aerobic and anaerobic exactly yeah so on the days that i'm doing uh, aerobic stuff i'm mostly ketogenic and yeah that's that's uh, that's that are the days that, that it really serves me 
So I feel a lot of energy. Well, mm -hmm. at first, um, when I was uh, overtrained or getting overtrained, uh, just endurance training would feel so terrible. I mean, I was, uh, I would feel you would feel the burn after already in the like the first ten minutes. So it, I had to endure two hours of of the most terrible endurance training ever. But you know, the mind can also push through that. But it's not it's not ideal. So when I'm now that I'm keto, and my body is is healing, um, endurance training becomes pleasurable again. So. Uh, relatively speaking relatively yeah yeah right. so now, now i'm actually uh, starting to enjoy it so i guess to to cover our bases on the technical side i mean it, we know we can't really get into ketosis instantaneously it takes a few days to a week so it sounds like maybe you're more fat adapted now yes. because yeah. because you've healed your mitochondria your metabolism those exactly. fuel pathways and then you have that metabolic flexibility to um on the days where you need power, you can have the carbohydrates. And then on the days where you don't, you can lower them and be yeah. uh, fat adapted, using fat as a predominant fuel source for the aerobic based days. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So after the games, I told myself, all right, this is the moment that I can go all out on the biohacking stuff. You know, this year is, uh, is the least demanding year and mm -hmm. everybody's is laying low, all the, all the all the elite athletes that went to the Olympics are now taking holidays and stuff like that. So I thought, all right, now I'm going all out with the keto thing. And I, I gave myself one year to get fat adapted. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I took it relatively slow. I didn't go in full ketosis uh, from one day to the other. Um, and uh, I took it slow. And it, it, it worked. So I'm, I'm, I can now just do training on a glass of water. Well, at first I needed... Um, like the Gatorade, the Aquarius, all the things to just get through the training. Now I'm just going out on a cup of coffee, uh, and I'm and I'm perfect until noon. You know, one of the questions that I was going to ask you was in regards to the four year approach. Uh, that's a long time for anybody to chase something, anything. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> we think about like procrastination, and you think about a, a college student who has a uh, a semester long project and they put it all off until the last, you know, month or, or, you know, even week of the semester, four years between Rio and I don't, I don't even know, 2020, where, where are those games? Tokyo. Tokyo. Okay. So I think we already got a little bit of a glimpse into how you're approaching it because you just said you were going to take 2017 as the year to get fat adapted. But mm -hmm. so, so already I know you're kind of breaking this down into like yearly micro or, or meso cycles and then you mm -hmm. probably got micro cycles within each year but talk to our listeners about how you're approaching that four-year uh timeline that you have mm -hmm. to get from rio to you know your your goal is to go from fifth in rio in 2016 to gold in tokyo 2020 how do you stay focused for four years how do you make sure that every single day uh you know your your actions are congruent with that goal uh, for four years yeah that's um, that's something that i had to i had to learn what i what i did before rio so the, the last four years i just went through it like a like a mad dog just go for it every day and just go all out every day and now i'm much more um i'm much more patient with the progress so uh i tell myself i make goals i make goals for 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 every year and for um, every uh, season and i have to tell myself to slow down more than i have to tell myself to then i have to like uh, kick myself uh, on the in the ass to get myself uh, off the off the couch because your elite athletes are very very motivated people they have very clear goals they want they want medals they they dream of it when they go to sleep they, they see the medals they see themselves finishing so they, you don't need to motivate them and um, but uh, what can happen if you if you stimulate them too much they can get overtrained and i had to just uh, like uh, uh, slow myself uh, down a little bit so i had to trust the progress and the and the trust the path that i that i was uh, that i was on and now i have a good team around me of people who can uh, who can help me get my body in order again 
So I'm now I'm 28 years old, and I'm feeling better than I did that when when I was uh, 24 years old. But I know that there is uh, that there is even uh, like if I thought this was a 10, I know that there is a, a 14 or a, a 15. So I, I'm I'm just going to make progress each day, slow steps, easy steps. I love it. Progress every day, uh, never going all out, leaving a little bit in the tank. Yeah, just leave a little bit in the tank. I mean, you have to you have to keep the keep 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 uh, keep the hunger every day. I, I think that's one of the things that I, a mentor taught me. This was back in 2012. Was you know, if you do one thing every single day to move your mission forward, um, and, and that's that's been such a game changer for me. No matter how down or how tired or how how much I needed a break, you know, you, you make a deal with yourself when you wake up and you say, "All right, you know what? I am going to take a break today, but mm-hmm. first, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to do this one thing that moves it forward, and it could be." could be a five minute phone call uh, that you've been, you know, that, that will help, you know, either delegate something that somebody else can do or uh, that, that in some way moves your mission forward. It doesn't matter what the thing is, but you do one thing every day. And then exactly. if you do that, then sure, you can take the rest of the day off. But what I found is that that actually generates momentum. And then you usually do a couple more things. Exactly. Um, so I, I've got a question for you then. I know you've been using Natural Stacks products. Mm-hmm. And you know, do not feel obligated to turn this into a, a, an infomercial. But um, at, given what you just said, I'm curious. Do you feel like you use serotonin brain food more than dopamine brain food to help slow down and sort of recuperate, restore, recharge, as opposed to that dopamine to kind of give yourself that that kick in the butt to get things done? Yeah. So the way I approach it. Um, is I use uh, I use something that's called the Braverman test, mm-hmm. and it's it's getting really popular now. Uh, a lot of strength coaches are also using it. Charles Polikin is also a very big fan of it, and uh, it this this is the one thing that that that's made the, it's so easy to implement, and it can make such a big difference because, I mean, there are so many so many products on the market, and there. I mean, there are four neurotransmitter products from Natural Sex alone. You have to take all four of them. Well, uh, it can, it, it can, but um, uh, there, you probably have a deficiency in one more than the other. So, if you take the uh, like the product that you're deficient in, like a uh, serotonin, if you're serotonin deficient, if it comes out of the Braverman test, you take the serotonin brain food and you get more of an effect than if you take if you would have taken the dopamine brain food so that that made a big difference if i i check which neurotransmitter i'm deficient in and i take something that's uh, that's that's that will re, re uh, replenish those uh, those neurotransmitter all right that's well said um for you guys listening, we'll put a link to the Braverman test in the show notes. We've talked about that quite a few times on the show before. Um, let's go back to the beginning. I mentioned that when we were in Finland, you uh, we were talking about neurofeedback. You were going to start implementing that uh, to help you stay focused you know, for the duration of your race. Mm-hmm. How has that been going for you? What have you noticed? Yeah, it's, it has been different than I, what I thought would have happened. Um, I thought it would, uh, it would be like a, like a nootropic. And that it would make me uh, more uh, like a laser focus during during the race, but in in practice, what it did for me more that it was uh, it was more of a um, relaxing relaxing exercise. It it, mm-hmm. it made my meditations uh, much more deep. I mm-hmm. do meditations uh, every day, and the the worst thing was that when I was overtrained, these meditations it 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 just it didn't work anymore. Mm-hmm. And that was also, of course, stressing me out that I couldn't do meditation anymore. So I was even more stressed. Mm-hmm. And now, uh, with the with the help of these with this neurofeedback, the meditation gets so much so much deeper, and uh, that just made uh, my life more uh, more easy, more easygoing. So uh, stress would not uh, would not hit me as hard as it as it uh, would before. Mm-hmm. So that made my training easier. Mm-hmm. And uh, just things just just uh, slide off you more easily if you're uh, if when I did the when I did the neurofeedback. 
And of course, I do it before a race because uh, you, I like to make my head clear before a race. I'm, uh, I'm, I, I did a genetic test also, and uh, it showed that I'm uh, that I have um, slow adrenaline. Um, that my adrenaline goes 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 uh, low uh, very slow, and so if I take something with a lot of caffeine, uh, I can uh, I can get uh, very jittery. People who take caffeine and feel uh, very jittery, they probably also have uh, have this uh, this gene of slow um, slow adrenal adrenal um, clearance. So um, I have to make myself more chill before a race than actually pumping myself up i've learned that through the years but now i can now i know it because i did the te genetic test and now i can actually uh, look specifically for all these uh, things that help me be more chill before a race like neurofeedback okay so what sort of things would you suggest to our listeners uh, as a resource for them to you know, do what you did because, you know, I, I, you know, the saying is seek what they sought, don't do what they did. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you looked for things that would help you, um, increase your performance and you found, you know, what you just described. So where mm -hmm. would you send listeners if they were saying, ah, oh, well, you know, that was brilliant. How do I incorporate that into, you know, my pursuits? Yeah. So the one thing that made a big difference for me is, is look for somebody that is a really good uh, functional medicine practitioner, something like that. If you, don't, if you don't have all the knowledge yourself, go find somebody that, that has the knowledge. Don't go out on the internet and start on this, uh, in this big hole that, that is the internet. Because I did that for, for years and then I just found some guy, one guy in the Netherlands. I mean, there was nobody in the Netherlands that was doing this. Uh, and it is, it is getting big in, in, in America, but in the Netherlands, nobody was doing it, this back then. So I found a guy that could help me, and that just uh, accelerated things so much faster than if I would have gone through it alone. Okay. Um, so let's, let's go back to, you know, when you came into the Olympic team, you were helping kind of consult with diet. Are you still... Uh, or, or what role are you playing in the diet of your teammates? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. They, they see me uh, take a handful of pills uh, uh, every day, so they, they start asking questions. But I try not to mingle too much with their, with their, um, uh, with their uh, cloth. You know? So I, 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 I feel like I'm... I, I'm a professional. I cannot. Uh, I cannot uh, do what uh, what uh, what a functional medicine practitioner does, and I'm. I have to take my hands off it a little bit. But sometimes they get itchy, and I want to tell them something. And well, I, I, I can imagine when you guys travel and you're preparing all these amazing foods that I've seen on your Instagram account. <laughs> Uh, we'll link to that on the show notes for you guys. Make sure you go follow this guy and uh, check out some of the foods and, and the training. And uh, but uh, they've got to want to eat some of the food that you're eating. And you know, when you, I, if some of the guys that are on the team now were the original ones when you came in, I can't imagine that they would see you know this transformation that you've gone through and and not had that light bulb moment. Like maybe I should do what he's doing. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sure that it will happen, but it goes slowly and people change slowly. Uh, so they first have to see, uh, see it to believe it and, uh, it, it will happen, but, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not in a hurry. <laughs> so, uh, so it would be nice if, if, um, if this would, uh, if this ketogenic thing would uh, start, uh, to come off the ground in, 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 in the Netherlands and, in the sport in different kind of sports because i think that's that's the, the thing that, that can um, improve athletes the most and okay. uh, they, they 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 will they will get it eventually they will but yep. uh, yeah i don't uh, i don't mm -hmm. uh, maybe you just need to make some more youtube videos <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah but that's you know the youtube videos were were fun but i also you know when i got i, I made the youtube videos and then i got overtrained so i've Kind of felt like a hypocrite, <laughs> I'm, uh, ashamed. To, so I, I, I didn't come out with uh, with new videos after that, uh, or because I, I, 
I first had to know that this was like the real deal. You know, I have to right. find out for myself that this is the thing that's working. And I, I'm, I'm, I now found out that what is working for me will, uh, will quite frankly, probably not work for you. Right. You have to, you have to, that's what I say when I, when somebody asks me, I say, uh, uh, always say the, the line uh, check yourself before you wreck yourself, you know, go yep. test, go test. Uh, what is the hardest part of your training or, or preparing for the Olympics? Um, yeah, it's the, it's probably the, um, the uncertainty, the uncertainty that you will, uh, that you're training for something, but <laughs> they can also just kick you out of the boat anytime. And I mean, that's, that's the same with, um, with, with entrepreneurs. There's, there's so much uncertainty and that's the, that's the, I think that's the hardest part. But if you are a person that can live with great uncertainty, then you will probably um, cope with the, yeah, with the stress that, that comes with it. All right. Govier, what is the best advice you've ever been given? Mm, the best advice? Um, I, think, uh, I think it is create momentum. Create momentum and, uh, and the 10-minute rule. Uh, the 10-minute the rule for me was uh, I had to finish my thesis in the Olympic year because otherwise I would have to... Uh, pay back the loan that uh, was given to me I would, that was, it would be uh, mm. terrible if I, if, I didn't, uh, if I didn't make it. So, um, but then again, this, uh, this thesis was like a big sword over my head and I was, uh, I was uh, procrastinating to, to do, the, to do this, this thing. So somebody said to me, just, just go sit down 10 minutes and work on, on your thesis. So just 10 minutes. And if, you're, if, you, if you don't want any more after 10 minutes, just quit after that. And basically what happens if you're 10 minutes in, you're kind of in the flow and you're, you're doing it. And you're, before you know it, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're, two hours, uh, you're two hours in. And that's basically with everything. It's also with training. If, you're not, if you don't want to train, uh, just say, all right, I'll do, I'll do it 10 minutes and then before you know it, you're, you're getting a super good workout, which you thought was going to be crap. So, yeah, that made a difference. That, that's, the, that's the one thing that, that made me get my thesis. That's really cool. I've, I've never heard the 10-minute rule, but I will say that that's very similar to what I've heard and what I've experienced with Pomodoros. Um, you know, and that's typically a 25-minute period with a five-minute break. And that's been, that's something that, you know, if I've got this project or this thing that I don't want to deal with or don't want to do, I just sit down and say, all right, it's just 25 minutes. And usually by the time that first 25 minutes is up, when the timer goes off, I'm, I'm like you just said, I'm, I'm in the flow and I'm like, man, that went by really fast. And, you know, you, you're, you almost want to skip that next five minute break and just keep going or get right back into it. So yeah, um, very, cool. Right. very cool. Very yeah. uh, cool. Where can our listeners get more of you? Um, yeah, it would, uh, it would help me very much if they would follow me on, uh, on Instagram. And, um, so, uh, if you link to that, then, uh, mm -hmm. give me a follow. I'll I really appreciate it because rowing, it's, uh, it's an amateur sport in, uh, in the Netherlands. I, uh, I get an allowance for, uh, or like an, uh, like paid from the, from the state, but it's, it's like a, it's, it's not, it's not big. So I'm uh, dependent, depending on sponsors and, uh, yeah, following me on Instagram helps helps a lot with that. Okay, uh, and then you have Worlds coming up in a few weeks, right? You said that's yeah. in Sarasota, Florida. Yeah, that's right. They're in uh, they're in America. Yeah, so I'm I'm heading over to you in uh, in three weeks. Okay, is that going to be televised or uh, yeah. online? Is there any way that our listeners can watch you? Because this yeah, will, of course, that'll, yeah, it'll probably they, happen. What What's the date of that event? Um, it begins the 24th and, uh, we, uh, we wrote two days later and, um, uh, they can follow it on, uh, worldrowing.com. Okay. Yeah. There's a live stream and everything. It's, um, it's, and it's pr probably broadcast on television too, but everybody watches the live stream. 
All right. We'll make sure we put a link to that on the show notes so our listeners can watch you win the world championship. Of course. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, all right. Final question. You know what's coming. We want to know your top three tips to live optimal. Mm, yeah. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Just test, test, test. And so find, find someone that can do the test for you that knows exactly what kind of test to take and uh, and 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 how to act upon these the outcomes of these uh, of these tests and that will probably cover uh, they will give you more tips than i can give you now because there is uh, yeah there will probably be a lot of information in your in your saliva in your poo in your urine in your blood there's a wealth of information about uh, what you can improve so i'm definitely a big a big fan of that and this, the second one is probably um, that's applicable to everybody. Get get out into into nature more. Uh, walk uh, walk bare feet. Go swim in cold rivers, and uh, uh, do uh, do do hot saunas. Just expose yourself to to hot, cold uh, ground and and nature. That's a, that's a, that was a big one for me when I was uh, when I was when I was super stressed and super uh, overtrained. Just go out in nature. It, it makes uh, it makes a world of difference. Yeah, let me throw one in here real quick. There's I just came across this study. Uh, it's new to me. I'm not sure when it was published, but I'll put a link to it in the show notes for you guys. Um, but there's actually a study showing that 20 minutes of grounding, um, just barefoot contact with the earth drastically increases circulation they have some uh, some images scans of uh, just even the face to show how uh, we have increased circulation through our head and our face um, after 20 minutes of grounding so um, that's really cool i'll put a link to that in the show notes for you guys yeah yeah i, I think in the in the future there will be a lot more studies coming out on uh, grounding or electromagnetic magnetic fields or um, i mean uh, it looks like uh, like woo woo stuff now, but mm -hmm. there will be studies that uh, that, that tell uh, that, uh, and that, may, that it will make a difference. Yep, yep. It's it's more than woo woo. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, and, you got one more, right? Yeah the the last one the last one. Um, I think it would be uh, focus focus on if you want to achieve something that is truly uh, truly. Magnificent! You have to focus entirely on that one thing, and don't make this, the mistake that uh, I did. Like, like if you want to do a study and do a startup and be an Olympic champion, <laughs> that's not going to work. Just focus on one thing. That's the and and go all all out on that one thing. All right, I love it, Hover. This has been a blast. Thank you for. Coming on the show, we wish you much success in two weeks, three weeks at, at the World Championships. And, um, you know, I'm sure we'll be in contact with you a little bit more between now and the Tokyo Games. Uh, let's do something for our listeners. What is your favorite Natural Stacks product? Because I know you've been using a few in your training. Yeah, Myco Boost. Okay. I love it. All right, let's go with that one, Myco Boost. Yeah. So yeah. for you guys listening, if you go to naturalstacks.com, use the code Hover. That is G O V. <laughs> yeah. should, should we do? How about rowing? Let's do yeah, rowing. Do rowing. Do, Let's do rowing. Do, don't do COVID. Nobody will. Nobody right. will understand. The code. The code. <laughs> the code will be row O P P R O W O P P. That's better. And you will save fifty percent on your first month of Myco Boost if you put it on subscription. All right, I'm going to write that down before I forget it. Row O P P R O W O P P saves 50% on your first month when you put Myco Boost on subscription. Uh, Naturalstacks.com will have the blog post, video, links, resources, all the cool stuff that we talked about. Uh, give you jumping off points if you want to follow up on all of those. Instagram for Hover, so you can follow him. WorldRowing.com, so you can watch him win a world championship with his Dutch teammates. Um, as Americans, I'm, I'm not sure if we can root for you, but uh, I don't know anybody on the American team, so I'm going to cheer for um, you. Thank you very much. And 
Guys, go to iTunes, leave us a five-star review. Let us know how much you enjoy the show. Uh, we will read your review on the air. When we do, we will hook you up with a natural stacks care package and share the OPP with your friends, with your family, anybody in your life who you know will enjoy and benefit from the things that we're talking about here on the show. Thank you guys for being here today. Over, thank you for spending some time with us, uh, you, taking Ryan. some time out of your training uh, schedule. To, no problem. I loved it. Anytime. Yeah, it's been a blast and I uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.